to keep yourself muted uh, while other folks are speaking. Um, I will be emceeing, so uh, when I call your name, feel free to unmute yourself and um, you can uh, say a few words. Uh, following the run of show, we'll do a brief Q&A. If there's any questions from the press, um, you can unmute yourself or write in the chat and I'll read the question aloud. Um, so uh, again, thank you all for joining. Um, we are going to start uh, with Manhattan Borough President uh, Gail Brewer uh, to say a few words. Um, so again, thanks for joining. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I wanna thank my fellow Borough Presidents for co-hosting this press conference with me and with the awesome organization Live on New York for joining us and giving us a citywide perspective. I wanna say something about Live on New York. Um, during the worst of the pandemic, certainly not over, we were absolutely sure the seniors were not eating. They were uh, in their apartments. They were trying to do the right thing. They had no food in many cases and Live on was literally their lifeline and I, I want to thank them. We call Live On every day. They help get the senior centers onto platforms so that the centers could then figure out who was or was not on the list for food. Uh, they help with NYCHA where there always is a challenge and I, the list is endless. Uh, Shula Warren Puder from our office, I think she talked to them three or four times a day. Many seniors ate because of Live On New York. So um, thank you so much and I think it shows the purpose of this press conference is that the senior centers more than uh, maybe any other uh, organization in the city is the lifeline. Certainly youth organizations are also, but in a different way. Uh, this pandemic showed that without the senior centers, people would have died, they would have starved. And of course, I don't need to talk about mental health. So um, I'm here to say how outrageous this process was in terms of the budget and the budget cuts and not knowing. I happen to have been in the city council, as you know, for 12 years. I was on the budget negotiation council for those 12 years. I was co-chair of the Manhattan delegation for those 12 years. And I know the difficulties and the politics of negotiating a budget. Um, but the lack of communication and transparency at this particular time for this particular item um, that we're talking about today is appalling. Uh, to inform the organizations and people uh, being hurt by this cut. It's not us as borough presidents, it's the seniors and the senior centers. We had no ability to negotiate. We had no ability to discuss what was being cut. We had no heads up. It's just not right. I, I do remember that during my time in the city council, a similar discussion took place. Council members felt that this money wasn't allocated by them so why should they allocate it through their budget when in fact there were cuts? But we did give heads up to the borough president and in fact it was restored. That's what I remember. Uh, because again, it's not us, it's not the council member, it's the seniors and the senior organizations that literally give them their lives. We know that the Department for the Aging, DIFTA is a very small agency, makes up less than 1% of the city's budget and yet is responsible for providing a myriad of services to the fastest growing, I hate to tell you, there are now more people over 65 than 18 and under in the city of New York. So it provides services to the fastest growing population. And I don't think anybody would argue that it's the most vulnerable population in the city of New York, our seniors, our older adults. When I first became Manhattan Borough President over six years, almost seven, almost eight years now, our office distributed over $600,000 to organizations serving seniors in the borough of Manhattan. And I know in Queens, for instance, it's an even larger number. Last year, the amount appropriate was down to 2000, to $241,675. The money I allocated last year went to 66 different organizations in the borough of Manhattan. These are amazing organizations as are, and I know every borough president will state this, these senior citizen organizations do so much with so little. Let me give an example. Cabrini Immigrant Services has a food pantry for seniors. I don't need to tell you how important that is. Dances for a Variable Population provides a 
seniors dance and wellness programs, hundreds of people participate. I've been to their incredible performances. Harlem Advocates for Seniors runs hands-on healthy cooking classes for seniors in locations where there often is not fresh fruits and vegetables. SAGE is one of the only organizations in the city that has services for trans seniors, LGBTQ seniors. Just last week, they ran 100 virtual programs for their members. Vision Urbana teaches technology training and did census outreach to seniors on the Lower East Side. This is an example of what we fund. Visiting neighbors provides services to those older adults who cannot leave their homes, a service that has been so critical during this pandemic. And this is just a small list of the many, many programs, again, across all five boroughs. I could go on. But I will end by saying that the city needs to find funding for these programs and initiatives. We absolutely cannot afford to cut services to these seniors. These seniors rely on these services, perhaps like no other group of people. Not today. The seniors are already suffering the impacts of COVID-19, and we know that. And not moving forward when they need our support more than ever to say it's a travesty is not even beginning to describe the impact. Thank you very much, and I look forward to restoring these funds so that these seniors and these senior programs, which already barely have a lifeline, can continue to provide the services during the pandemic's not over. And many of these seniors are suffering more than any of the rest of us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Borough President Brewer. Uh, next, we're going to hear from uh, Brooklyn Borough President Eric Adams, followed by Caitlin Andrews from Live on New York. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I really want to thank my colleagues uh, and all of the organizations uh, for coming together on this uh, important issue. Uh, many of you uh, know so well, uh, as Manhattan Borough President indicated, uh, coronavirus disproportionately impacted our senior population more than any other group. And instantly their lives were disrupted and basically turned upside down. And we had the only lifeline towards helping them was through uh, these senior programs. Uh, the money that went to DIPTA, when you think about it, uh, is really disproportionate to the amount of seniors in our city. 20% uh, of our population uh, is made up of seniors, uh, yet when you look at the DIPTA budget, uh, we basically tell our seniors you have to fend for themselves and then to have a cut of this magnitude without any warning, without any knowledge of so that we could not engage in a conversation with our seniors on how we could better uh, help them during this difficult time uh, sent the wrong message. And so we are sending a clear and loud message to the city and the city council. Uh, one, we're calling on this calling on them to restore the funding. And in the meantime, uh, we want the city to work to establish a public-private partnership to fill this uh, budgetary gap. Uh, this is, uh, it, is so important because when you look at uh, issues around uh, loneliness, issue around the lack of access to healthy food, uh, the lack of checking in on our seniors, uh, these programs provide such a crucial method of ensuring our seniors are receiving the necessary support and care. And also, when I think about how many times my centers and my advocates talk about the reminder of taking medicine, the reminder of doctor's appointment, uh, being able to socialize in an environment. Here you have countries abroad like Britain that has a loneliness all because they know the impact, how loneliness plays, plays, plays an important role on their overall health. We are ignoring that here in New York. We must put this funding back and find partners within our city to also be a part of ensuring uh, that these services are provided. So again, I wanna thank all of the advocates and of my uh, colleagues in government for seeing how imperative it is uh, that we have a united voice of ensuring a substantial 
of population of this city receive their basic services. They gave us all we needed to ensure that this city thrived and is successful. We need to give all they need to have a healthy lifestyle in the golden age. It should not take a terrible uh, incident and impact on the funding of this important population. So again, thank you so much. I'm proud to be part of joining my voice in this very significant uh, call to reinstate uh, the funds that, were, that was cut uh, from DIFTA. Thank you. Thank you, Borough President Adams. Uh, next, we want to hear from Caitlin Andrews with um, Live on New York. Hi, everyone. Th thank you so much for allowing me to join and to speak today. Thank you to Borough President Brewer for your kind words and Borough President Adams for continuing the fight um, and to all of the Borough Presidents, Borough President Lee, Otto, uh, Diaz Jr., we're, we're so thankful to be here today because we know that the United message in all of this is how impactful New York's nonprofits are. It is incredible the work that New York's small, large, every single nonprofit in our communities does every single day. And that has been clear for decades, but I think it's been more clear than ever during a pandemic in which older adults were disproportionately at risk. Providers have seen loss, they have been grieving and yet they've been showing up to work every single day to continue the fight to make sure that every older adult that they come into contact with has what they need to live, to thrive, to age with dignity in their communities. And that's what this is all about. We know that the Department for the Aging has been underfunded for some time. It still remains at less than one half of 1% of the overall city budget. Um, despite the fact that older adults, as has been noted, are such a growing population within our city and really have so much that they contribute to our city, whether it's caregiving or grandparents helping to raise grandchildren or just being anchors and, and eyes on the street looking out trying to make sure that our communities are the best that they can be. And yet, still, we're here fighting. We're, we're fighting for every single dollar that goes into the Department for the Aging Budget. And that's disheartening. We knew it was a diff difficult budget year. And unfortunately, um, from the executive budget, there were huge gaps that city council saw and were trying to fight for. And it's just disheartening from the get-go to see the level of cuts that were imposed on DIFTA, all council funding slash all uh, key funding that services need really should not have been at risk, not last year, next year, but especially not during a pandemic. We need to have consistency in funding. We need to have increases in funding. We need to support seniors uh, with more um, than rhetoric, but to truly make sure that every single older adult has the resources in their community, that being the nonprofits. Um, we know that the borough presidents are integral in this. My office is constantly in communication with the borough president's offices, seeing what can we do, what are you hearing? And we know that the majority of calls that you all receive are from older adults who are trying to get connected with services that wouldn't be possible without the nonprofits that are funded in this pot of funding and all of the funds that the city is able to provide. Um, we need to really, uh, reprioritize our budget and continue to make strides um, and reverse harmful cuts as, as they come about. So I thank you all for the opportunity to speak. I thank you for bringing such attention to this issue. Um, we know it was a difficult budget year, but that should never be balanced on the backs of our older adult um, participants in senior programs and throughout our city. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Caitlin. Uh, next, we want to hear from Staten Island Borough President uh, James Otto. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. It's uh, good to see all of you. Let me start with a thank you. Uh, I don't get to see uh, the advocates as much as I did when I was uh, running around City Hall with Gail Brewer all those years. Uh, but I do want to thank you for everything uh, that you do. You should, at this point in the budget calendar, be exhaling from all of the great work you, you, uh, you do during the budget process to make sure our seniors are protected. And the fact that we have to have this uh, Zoom press conference on this issue 
because these cuts uh, took place. Really disheartening. Uh, let me say hello to my friends, Gail and Sharon, Eric, my man, Ruben. I miss you all. Um, you guys are wonderful. And thank you for what you have done, uh, particularly these last few months. Uh, I want to echo a few of the things that my uh, colleagues have said. First, um, to Gail's point about overall lack of communication. Uh, I too was in the council for more than 12 years and I don't remember a budget process that lacked a level of communication to this degree. Uh, I was going to start with a joke about vasectomies because I learned over the weekend that the city's deer vasectomy program for Staten Island was cut. And if you forgive all the puns that are in there, um, we found out about it after the fact. Um, I can forgive that about deer. I can't really forgive this and have to find out from my colleagues that this cut uh, took place. I also want to echo the comments uh, that Borough President Adams made. I, I just finished this weekend a book by a science journalist, uh, Lydia Denworth. It's a book uh, on friendship. And it goes into great detail about the growing science, how isolation impacts us on a, on a cellular level. It's no different than uh, smoking or lack of exercise or eating the wrong foods. The science becomes clearer by the day how friendship helps, those, those bonds of friendships help, and, and how isolation kills. And I'll, I'll end my little rant with, it's really difficult for me to sit here and reconcile on a daily basis hearing press conferences talking about the most vulnerable and equity and fairness and the most vulnerable and speaking out of one side of go city government's mouth with all of that rhetoric and then at the same time cutting the most vulnerable. If you think cutting Meals on Wheels in Staten Island isn't going to have an impact, you're kidding yourself. If you think that cutting the CYA Senior Guild or Richmond Home Needs Services or our senior uh, centers isn't going to hurt, isn't going to fuel part of that isolation that we alluded to. You're kidding yourself. So um, this is a mistake. Let's hope our friends uh, and our colleagues in government realize that and rectify it as soon as possible. Thank you again to my colleagues in government. Thank you to all the advocates for what you do. Can I get in? Yes, yeah, sorry, I was going to say, uh, uh, Borough President Diaz, go ahead. Uh, for, first of all, I just want to thank all of the organizations, not just for being here today, but for everything that you do. Uh, I want to give a special shout out to Live On. And of course, in the Bronx, we have so many organizations uh, as well, Rain and so many others. I don't want to uh, mention them all. I know I'm going to leave folks out. Uh, many of you know that uh, it's been part of many of the things that we've done, my life mission to provide, uh, not only professionally, but through my family for many, many uh, decades now, services to our senior population. And um, I concur with everything that my colleagues, and I'm, I know that Sharon's gonna speak after, uh, with all, everything that my colleagues have said. Uh, what I wanna say is this, I, I wanna say, I, I would love to believe that this was just a, a terrible oversight by City Hall and, and the City Council, because uh, that would be the best case scenario. If not, if, 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 if that wasn't an oversight, what we've seen here is the worst case scenario, which is the most egregious example of, hyp of hypocrisy uh, when you come to this budget. Look, when you look at how we've all been saying that post pandemic, that we are going to be prioritizing all of the social economic sectors and silos so that we could be better off in the future, so that those communities could be better off in the future, then um, as it was stated here earlier, no community has been more, most vulnerable and, and hit the hardest than our senior population. And if you cut services to DIFTA, and if you cut services to Meals on Wheels, and if you cut services uh, to um, senior programming, uh, that is gonna not only create um, further detrimental anxiety and, and pain to our communities, 
Uh, but I will go a step further. The, 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 the discretionary funds that we get as the borough presidents, that's a fraction of a fraction of the overall budget, a fraction of a fraction of that. Um, when you talk in aggregate last year, what, what did we get? Over a million dollars in aggregate. And yet we were able in my borough to do a couple of dozen senior citizen programs. I know that all the borough presidents have been able to do it. What, we, what we're sending, uh, the message that, that this budget sends and the cuts to our discretionary funds is that as we move forward, that we, are, we don't believe, that we don't have hope in that our seniors also want to enjoy themselves. I get the food, I get the medical services, but what about also programming and be, being creative about programming so that at the very best, with all of the conditions that we have around us, that senior citizen centers can get the little bit of money that we allocate to them so that they can provide um, services, so they can pro provide outing and entertainment. That goes a long way as well. That, that speaks to the well-being of our seniors. And we could do, the, you know, it, it, I, I would, it, would be, it would be interesting to see how much money in this budget is gonna go to buy toilet paper for, for city agencies. I bet you that's 10 times the amount of the money that is going to go uh, for the borough presidents to do our discretionary funding so that our senior citizens can have at least an enjoyable moment here and there. We have made a dollar, not out of 15 cents, we have made a dollar out of a hundredth of a hundredth of a cent. And, and, and for them to be able to move forward on this budget, to not have the input that, that, um, from our offices, uh, it sends a message to our seniors that even though we talked a good game, that even though we said we were going to prioritize, that even though we know you're the most vulnerable, we really don't care. You know, just to, just to um, uh, piggyback a little bit about what uh, Otto said and, and, and just to, um, to quote um, certain people, there's a philosopher Confucius that spoke about filial piety and that's paying homage to those that come before us. Think about who we are as a city now and how we have totally, totally disrespected any level of filial piety to those who have come before us when they need us the most. We can do this certainly by uh, sharpening our pencils in the budget, uh, but also to add on to what Eric Adams said, um, I'm also in agreement that if you go to corporate America, we could certainly make up at least some of the money that, that has been cut. But no one has been reaching out to us. No one has been getting our input. And so here's where we are today. I'm so happy that all of you continue in the fight. I'm so happy that you've been able to accommodate us through Zoom to be able to lend our voices. And um, I'm still cautiously optimistic that the city council and that the mayor will find in the kindness of their heart to do better by the people who were there for our city uh, many, many years ago when we were hurting. Now it's time for us to be there for them. Thank you. Thank you, Borough President Diaz. Uh, next, we're gonna hear from uh, Queensborough President uh, Sharon Lee uh, and then Maria Alvarez, uh, and then we'll uh, open it up to questions. Borough President Lee. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Borough President Adams Brewer for convening us for convening this press conference. Um, you know, in Queen, here in Queens, we have 300,000 elders, 300,000 elders. And when you look at recent uh, budgets, uh, you can't help but notice that, you know, Queens has been shortchanged in years past. And we went into, we went into this, uh, this budget season knowing that uh, there would be pain to be shared uh, given the pandemic. That is a reality uh, that is not lost on any of us. But as many of my colleagues mentioned, it was uh, quite a surprise and that might be a, maybe a, a shock, might be an understatement to discover not in the, year, in the days leading up to the agreement, uh, but after the agreement was announced and on Tuesday, uh, pouring through Schedule C um, and finding that millions of dollars had been slashed 
without notice millions of dollars. And, you know, as Borough President Brewer said, you know, we're talking about um, senior services, providers, partners, many of whom are on this call today, who over the, la over the course of the pandemic, we saw them rise above and beyond serving our elders um, for wellness checks, for especially the shut-ins seniors, the homebound seniors who, who couldn't find other means um, to literally survive, as Gail said, uh, to survive, to, to eat. Um, and as some of the other colleagues mentioned, you know, um, hopefully this was an oversight. Hopefully this was an accident. Um, and, and, and it's possible because there was no notice. Perhaps, you know, in, in the flurry of, of the pandemic and the budget negotiations. And again, you know, my colleagues and I too, uh, and, uh, were no strangers to rough and tumble budget negotiations. Um, there were some rough and tumble budget negotiations post 9-11 uh, leading into the, uh, around the 2008 recession. The rough and tumble budget negotiations at 250 Broadway are, are nothing new. Um, but it, it is, it, was, it was deeply, and it is deeply concerning. Um, we, we cannot forget our elders. Uh, in the pandemic, the partners in this room, including both the government and the nonprofit partners in this room, refuse to forget our elders. And the budget should reflect that priority of our elders as well. Uh, on the call, we're joined by a couple of folks from Queens. Uh, I see uh, Danielle Elman, I think she was here earlier, from Common Point. They serve thousands of people, thousands of, thousands of elders. Uh, I also see Dr. Uh, Kalas Sapudi, uh, Executive Director of India Home. Uh, hundreds of seniors a day, hundreds, uh, pre-pandemic, during the pandemic. And when we're looking at this budget, in fiscal 21, this is gonna be a critical time, a critical time in our recovery and rebuild. And so the budget should reflect those priorities, especially for our elders. Um, and I join my colleagues in government in hopes that the cuts can be restored. Thank you. Thank you, Borough President Lee. Uh, the last speaker we are going to hear from is um, Maria Alvarez um, from the New York Statewide Council on Aging. Uh, we also want to recognize, uh, as Borough President Lee, some of the uh, providers who were able to join us, uh, among them uh, the JCC of Canarsie, New York Memory Center, the Fort Greene Council, the Family Center, uh, the Senior League of Flatbush, uh, and others on the call. So thank you again. Uh, we're going to open it, uh, turn it over to Maria Alvarez, and then we're going to open it up to questions if there are any. Thanks. Yes, um, thank you. My name is Maria Alvarez. I'm the, the Executive Director of Brooklyn Wide Interagency Council on Aging, and um, I want to thank you for, for calling, calling on me to, to make some remarks. Um, what, what we're seeing here is um, how the funds that come through through the borough president's offices are are vital because um, there are many there there, there are many uh, um, any there, there are many organizations that um, and, and and government entities that do not uh, address some of the needs that uh, that people see in the community right in the grassroots uh, of, of the of the of the community and. Um, the borough president, especially the uh, borough president Adams, he, you know, we've witnessed how he goes to the to the different communities, the housing, the senior centers, and he has initiatives uh, where he makes sure that 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 seniors are are protected, that they're receiving resources, and that we're able to as community-based organizations who are working on the front lines are able to address in these challenging times um, the needs of seniors. As we know that the seniors were, were deemed the most vulnerable population. It's appalling that, that these funds for, that, that are so important right now at this crucial time 
uh, are being cut. You know, uh, se senior organizations are there to help people with bereavement, with their meals, um, so and so much more with making sure that we answer their questions, making sure that we 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 help them pre um, prevent um, scams, um, making sure that they're informed. But not only that, so that then they can assert their their rights and that they are informed to be able to help in the community as well. Because as we know, seniors are, are the key to, to families and, and, and communities. And so um, we are, uh, we, we are, are uh, beside ourselves with, um, with confusion and with grief and with, with anger about how it could be that funds um, that that are so important that are the linchpin to, to the success of many community based organizations to making sure that some mom and pop not the large organizations that may have funding to to to, uh, to adjust and make some some changes and 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 get along but the small organizations that the, that depend on this funding and who are still viewed as trusted resources in the community to people who may not access uh, services um, in in a in a in a in a traditional form have access to the same information that 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 they need. So um, I want to thank everybody for for organizing this Zoom call, and um, we stand ready to to do any type of advocacy needed to make sure that that this wrong is is that is uh, righted. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Maria. Um, at this time, we're going to open it up to questions. If there are any, members of the press can uh, feel free to unmute themselves and ask uh, directly of any of the people who just spoke, or they can write in the chat. Hi, uh, I'm Dr. Kalaspudi uh, from India Home, a small not for profit organization serving seniors uh, in Queens. Um, uh, thank you very much, uh, Borough President uh, Sharon Lee. And we have been uh, supported by the Borough President discretionary funding uh, for the past few years. And this year, it was as a shock that uh, totally the budget is cut off. And not only that, the important thing is uh, seniors are affected because of sometimes they lost their partners and sometimes they can't even go out even to do groceries and the food insecurity is more serious and we really don't know how to um, serve these seniors because for the past three months what we have been doing after closing the centers is we are delivering home delivered meals to 110 seniors halal meals and we delivered groceries to 600 people. And the number of uh, telephone calls and also the Zoom conferencing calls for the activities, they are running in thousands. And the staff are working almost seven days, 24 hours. And it's, it's like uh, the seniors are reaching out to them, whether it is weekend or weekdays or evening or night. And because they are so concerned about not only about their health and what is going to happen, how long they are becoming homebound like this. So what, what's the solution? Do you think there is a hope for increasing of the budget? Because last year, what we got, uh, when compared to that budget, this year, we got only two thirds of the budget. And our services are increased quite a bit. So how can we survive during these difficult times? Would you like a particular uh, person to answer that, Miss? Uh, <laughs> maybe our borough president, <laughs> Sharon Lee. Well, I think that's precisely why we have this call, because it's worth fighting for. If the budget is worth fighting for, our elders are worth fighting for. Um, as, as I said earlier, I think uh, it's not lost on anyone in this room that we're going to have to do much more with less uh, in fiscal 21. 
but not on the backs, not, not to this degree, on the backs of our elders, should we shoulder this pain? And by we, I mean our, our seniors, our elders. Uh, so that's precisely why we're here today. But thank you for bringing that up. Thank you. Other questions from members of the press? Okay, well, I wanted to um, try to unmute themselves. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm not from the press. My name is Claudette Macy, the CEO, Executive Director of Fort Green Council. And we have a great dynamic borough president, Eric Adams. Thank you for joining this. And I just want to say I've been in the business of seniors. We have 13 programs. And I've been around for 40 years, but I'm looking like 15. And I'm just very, very concerned. Every year there's a fight with the budget. And I remember years ago, prior to Eric, we had a big fight. They cut it out completely years ago, and we had to fight again. I know it's a pandemic. My staff and myself, I'm right in my office. We are here, skeleton. Thank you, Borough President, for helping us initially with some um, gloves, some masks, which was delivered to my home in that time by Nan Blackshear, who does a great job. But I'm just very concerned and upset. I'm not an elected official, but I am an advocate for all of the seniors. And Brooklyn has the most number of 60 and over Brooklyn, the borough of Brooklyn. And Eric Adams visit all our sites. They fight, we have a good support. And I would like to know what Fort Green Council, myself and all my seniors, I know it's a pandemic, but we're ready to go on the road and whatever you need, what can we do? I know the seniors, I don't want to put them at harm's way, but we're doing a lot. If the budget should not be cut, the borough president budget should not be cut. We're thinking of the youths. I know most of the money from the press, from the precincts or the cops, wherever they're talking about the youths. I have this program too. What about the people who came before us? We have to respect our elderly. We cannot treat them this way. So what can we do and everybody else in all the boroughs that we can make this money get back before it slips away, we have to fight because we didn't know about it before. I think it's now time to roll up our sleeves and get in the trenches. So just let me know. I'm willing to join with all the boroughs. This cannot happen. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Macy. Okay, una. Buenas. Hello. Hi, this is uh, Dr. Anderson Torres, President and CEO of Rain Total Care. Uh, I must say that we're sharing in the trauma with every provider that's here. And there's something to be said about the relationships that we have, especially with our Bronx Borough President, Ruben Diaz Jr. And to be able to have that level of collaboration, influence, and someone that can advocate for the greater need of the senior population and vulnerable population, we are already leading programs. And so we don't have that, that level of involvement, that, that mean point person that's also invested, that, that believes in the senior services, the disparity, the inequity, and all of that. Um, this is a, a real traumatizing um, experience that we, it's only gonna intensify it, as this goes through. So I just wanted to voice that level of concern because this is not something that's also been able to be communicated to our population because of COVID-19. Um, so um, how, do we, how do we even get this information uh, out there? How do we share this concern? And that's critical. Thank you. I think I saw uh, Fernando. So if I, if, I could just chime in, if I could just chime in for a minute, Anderson. At least in, from our end in the Bronx, what we can do is maybe get, um, because we don't want to put, like um, Ms. Macy said, you don't want to put the seniors at risk. I know that there's been a lot of protests on many other issues. And, you know, they say the squeaky wheel gets the oil. But what about getting our seniors to make telephone calls? If, you know, um, and, and, just, and just flood the, 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 the phones of the city council members of City Hall. Um, and if we can try to do that, I mean, some seniors are already, many of them are on Facebook, like my mom, 
My mom is like a Facebook bandit. You know, she's always, so a lot of them know how to use, you know, some levels of social media. Not all of them do, but what about um, just getting out there to all of the seniors at Rain and throughout the city of New York and just say, call your city council person or call the chair of the aging committee, call the chair of the budget committee, call the speaker's office, call the mayor's office, call the, you know, uh, Lorraine Cortez, who's a good friend of mine and I love her, but she's the commissioner of, of DIFTA. And, and, and this way they know that what is happening right now is something that is not being just swept under the rug that even if either they do something about it and rectify it or that there's also a price to pay when you mess with the seniors. Um, if I just may say something, the, the seniors are, are, I think they're old hands at doing exactly that, uh, Borough President uh, Diaz. Um, so I think this is just a new age and a new way of doing it, but they, they are very experienced at calling and, 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 uh, and mounting campaigns like that. So I, I would like it if, if, um, if, if the, uh, the Association of the Borough Presidents could put together a you know, a, uh, a, a talk, some talking points and numbers to call, we would be able to, uh, to execute that. Okay, we, we know how to do that. So we can work on that. We know how to Perfect. do that. I think I saw uh, Fernando Martinez from El Diario trying to ask a question. I don't know if you wanted to. Yeah, yes, that. yes, it's possible uh, for a Rain Total Care President ask one question in Spanish? Sure, go ahead. It's possible to ask uh, one question in Spanish for the Spanish community? For, okay. Yes. Uh, mi, mi, mi pregunta es, eh, puntualmente, ¿cuál servicio, en caso de que se concreten estos recortes presupuestarios, en el caso de RAIN, que es una organización tan grande que maneja varios centros, conozco el trabajo, eh, ¿cuál es el riesgo específico de este recorte para ustedes en RAIN Total Care? Bueno, tremenda pregunta, Fernando, te lo agradezco y podemos tener una conversación más extensa después de esto también. Pero el miedo, bueno, eh, definitivamente los servicios eh, de, de lo, los servicios de envejecientes, las personas mayores, los servicios también de las comidas a los envejecientes, por ejemplo, los servicios también de la llamada para ver cómo están eh, las personas mayores. Es, es como una cadena de una reacción de domino que va de una ficha a otra. Y entonces va a ser un desastre, un desastre, porque ahora mismito, perdiendo un centavo, ¿verdad? Es mucho. Y, y entonces es un, un, un riesgo y, increíble. Y sabemos que va a haber los cortes. Entonces eso es el principio de otras cosas. Como te digo, ya nosotros en la industria eh, hemos visto los cortes y las consecuencias a, a las personas mayores. Y ha habido comunicación con ustedes de decir, ¿hay alguien de parte de la ciudad que le ha dicho, mira, esto viene así o, o todo es sorpresivo? No, fíjate, esto, por ejemplo, este asunto, yo me vi, yo supe de este asunto a través de la oficina del presidente del condado del, del Bronx. Eh, yo no tenía conocimiento de esto. Antes de, de esta llamada yo no tenía eso. So, fue a través de la oficina de, del presidente del condado del Bronx. Ok. Gracias. Hello. Si se puede un momentito en el español también. Seguro, seguro. No, Bienvenido. No es, no es solamente los servicios que se le, se le brindan a, lo, a, lo, a la gente de mayor de edad de los centros. Eh, o sea, la comida, eso es esencial, esencial también, todas esas cosas, ¿verdad? Pero ¿qué pasa? Que hay un sinnúmero de, de fondos que son muy pequeños, si lo puede creer que el departamento de, 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 la, de, de TIFTA no le puede dar ese dinero a los centros que se lo dan los presidentes de los condados para poder hacer ciertas cosas, viajes, eh, cosas de, de entretenimiento eh, para eh, eh, salir al, al parque, cosas, cositas así que también sirve para el bienestar de la gente de mayor de edad. Entonces, lo que se le estamos diciendo ahora, porque a nosotros los presidentes de los condados también se le está cortando eh, colectivamente está, lo que estamos hablando es un poquito de millón de dólares entre los cinco de nosotros, los cinco condados pero con ese millón de dólares se hace mucho 
Eh, un, Entonces, millón, ahora, un, millón, un millón ahora de chico. dólares del fondo, un millón, ah. de, un, un millón de dólares del fondo de todos los centros o un millón de dólares no. para estos presupuestos de los condados. Solamente no, estamos hablando, los centros se le están cortando más, pero también lo que se llama discretionary funds, o sea, el dinero que los, sí. los presidentes de condados podemos como individuo um, asignarle a los centros, que no es mucho, o sea, que son 10 mil dólares aquí. 15 mil dólares ahí, 5 mil dólares. Pero ¿qué pasa? Que los centros, lo que ellos hacen con ese dineral, no dineral, que no es mucho, con ese dinero, eh, eh, sacan a, lo, a, lo, a la gente de mayor de edad para eh, un viaje. Pueden hacer algo en, en una playa o, o hacer algo diferente porque obviamente el, el tiempo es, estamos en, en un tiempo difícil. Pero como quiera, podemos hacer algo para poder enseñarle a la gente de mayor de edad que tienen capaz de salir, que tienen capaz de hacerlo en una forma todavía saludable, que, que todavía creemos en ello y queremos que ellos se puedan divertir. So, estamos hablando no solamente de cortarle a aquellos que no pueden cocinar en la comida, estamos hablando de, de términos de, de, de servicios de salud, pero también el dinero que nosotros asignamos es para poder ofrecerle una, una mejor vida, por lo menos una vez o dos, mes a, o dos veces a la semana, que ahora el, 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 estos cortes no lo va a dejar hacer. Y eso es un falto de respeto, eso es una barbaridad, eso es algo que se tiene que arreglar. Y, y yo creo que lo, los concejales, el portavoz y el alcalde necesitan de escuchar y, y oír de la gente de mayor de edad, no solamente de nuestro condado, pero de toda la ciudad de Nueva York. Muchísimas gracias, eh, señor eh, Díaz. Obviamente el Bronx nuevamente es, eh, podría ser uno de los más vulnerables y más afectados por, por tener una de las comunidades más pobres. Sorry everyone because I, we speak in, in Spanish. No problem. Uh -huh. Did you have another question or was that all you wanted to ask? Uh -huh. Um, I want to be thank respectful so to, thank you, Fernando. I want to be respectful to everyone's time. So we'll allow one more question from the press if we have it. Um, but if not, um, we will conclude. Hi, I, this is Clarissa from Queens County Politics. I dropped one in the chat, but I can just say it. Go ahead. Um, so I, I'm just wondering what, if you're unsuccessful in restoring the funding, what that'll look like. Um, whether you think entire programs could be at risk of closing um, and also what next steps would be. Yeah, I'll jump in and just from a Staten Island perspective, I, I, you know, we tend to, as is the case, I think, in all the boroughs, and uh, we tend to work uh, uh, with, pro with our colleagues to cobble money together. Uh, I'm not sure what the individual council members have done in terms of funding the programs that I funded through this money, um, but I, the net effect will be I will have fewer meals to give out uh, for Meals on Wheels. I'll have fewer meals to give out at the CYO lunch program. There'll be fewer services provided. I don't think in and of itself, it ends any particular, you know, not-for-profit or any uh, particular program. It will just, will help fewer people. And again, given everything that we've all said about the most vulnerable among us, that's, uh, that's tough to take. This is Caitlin from Live On New York. I think, one of the common themes is how little funding goes to the Department for the Aging at the outset. Um, and that is even more stark this year. We can see in the budget that there was 10 million promised from the mayor um, in 2017 for the FY18 budget to have an additional 10 million put in in the FY21 budget. That $10 million is not there. There was a $5 million that was promised to go to uh, senior center uh, kitchen staff this year. That money is not there. There's another $4 million in citywide savings to DIFTA um, that is noting that it'll be lower operations due to COVID. Well, there's higher operations going on at senior centers. Staff is working harder than ever. So we're seeing cuts in other areas of the Department for the Aging budget, 
And these funds, all city council funds, actually help to fill in gaps that existed even without those funds. So the lack of any city council uh, discretionary dollar that in this case, the borough president discretionary initiative um, coupled with larger scale cuts to the Department for the Aging is going to have a really drastic impact. It could mean that there's staff that are furloughed or laid off. It, it certainly is going to be a challenge for every single nonprofit throughout the borough who needs to take a look at a little cut here, a little cut there, and what that accumulates to mean for their program and their ability to continue serving their seniors. Um, it was said earlier, I think, uh, by Borough President Otto that usually this is a time to exhale. Nobody's exhaling. Everybody is stressed out about uh, what these cuts mean and then what potential future cuts could mean if the state were to um, continue to not invest in senior services the way that we need. So um, the exact numbers of staff that could be laid off from this specific pot of fundings, I, I, I wouldn't know. I think it's more supplementary to the overall programs that you're seeing, but in cumulative, all of the cuts to DIPTA is going to have a serious impact on the ability to serve seniors throughout New York City. Okay. Uh, thank you again, everybody, for joining us. Um, a recording of this will be sent out uh, shortly, along with a press release. Um, and we want to thank all the advocates uh, and uh, all the borough president's offices for, for joining us today. Have a great rest of your day. Be safe, everybody. Thank you. You too.